G'day. If you've suffered through my last videos where I've made nothing, this will be a bit of a change actually get something made this time. This was when I was trying to balance some tools to go in the turret of my lathe. It needs the tools balanced or it fails to put the tools in the right place. But when I went to set it up, uh, the parting tool was crunching away like nobody's business and when I had a look, it was so far above centre it wasn't funny. So I decided to set up some tools and use my other lathe. Here I'm setting them up so they're in the same Z position, so nothing's going to hit the chuck. There you can see there's a bit of a gap there. I did end up using the turret to pull the tool out of the way, but, it, but when the parting tool was in place, that was the space that we had to work with anyway. Now, when I was a kid, I was taught never to use a rag to clean out a Morse taper. You use your finger, because if there's any damage inside the Morse taper, you will feel it with your finger. You won't feel it if you use a rag. I was using a Morse taper. I was cleaning that out because I was going to use this arbor stop. It's just a M5 screw on the end and the material will be pushed up to that. Here I'm just checking how much material I've got sticking out. I'm going to make five of these per blank. Now these bits of hex, they're all scrap. The bushes I'm making are to, re to repair a clock. When a clock's really worn out, the pivot holes become oval, so they are rebushed so that they can be put, uh, so that the holes are once again round. If they're oval enough in enough places, the clock will stop going because all the forces uh, are being applied in the wrong place. These are the sorts of tools that a clock person uses to do this rebushing. This is a tool that they can use. You can see that big ring there that sits flat on the plate and the, the drills go into the little spindle there. Here's a movie someone took for me of a pivot being able to move in its, in its hole. So that needs rebushing, obviously. Here's a drawing of the part. They're only 3.5 diameter and two millimeters long. So they're not very big is a drawing I did to try and get the tool nose radius compensation correct for a chamfer on the back of the part. This is the drawing I did to make a DXF to take into the part but as it happens I only needed the first one because I copied, copied and pasted the code further down the program. Here we are making the first part. 3000 RPM that's an aluminium insert on the end of the boring bar. The last pass just put the chamfers on. And we part it off. Or not. Because if they part off, you can't find them. Here we're looking under the microscope. You can see the left hand chamfer is almost not there and I don't like the look of the finish on the surface because it's a bit coarse. So here we go, making the second part. Um, final feed is 0.03 per rev to get a bit of finish. And I've made an adjustment in the code to get a better chamfer on that left hand side of the part as you saw it before. It doesn't look too bad, uh, but it is a little long, but you can see the surface finish is much better now. So I adjusted the chamfer again just to see if we could get it right. Once these things were in your fingers, it was difficult to tell which end was which, so I just used the texture. And it's a little short, but uh, customer actually didn't want any chamfers, so 
It's just a bonus. Don't like the way that facing's happening. I ended up I did a proper facing cut with the finish cut. Here's the fourth part. If you think the tool rapids are slow, they are. When I start a job, I like to slow the rapids down. It's give me a bit more time to hit the big red button if I need to. I slowed the feed down here to see if I could get a better facing, but it didn't help. I ended up, I included the facing cut in the finish cut. It looks not bad. And in fact it was a little long but close enough. But I don't like the face. Look, it's terrible. It's hollow. This is my setup for taking my microscope photographs. And now the code is close enough. I copy and paste it four times in the code to make it make five parts from the one blank and you shift the Z four millimeters for each new part at one stage I didn't do that and uh, it just tried to make five all in the same place that's a handy way of just checking that all the bl blanks have been cut to the same length it gives you a nasty surprise if uh, something's a bit long and your tool hits it while it's still in rapid mode I was trying to see what was going on here and to be honest I, with my eyes I couldn't see it so I ran the camera so it give me an idea of what was happening now that that nib there that you can see at the center didn't happen when I tested the tool um, in manual so don't know what was happening I ended up pulling them out with that bit still attached because they were just too difficult to find if you dropped them which happened and they're much easier to measure like that so I decided to uh, put a shim under the insert and I didn't want to make a complete shim so I just put a bit under screwed it down and uh, cut round it and that's the result no nib Now there's still something wrong with the way the centre's looking. Um, so I added a facing cut to it, as I've already mentioned, and it looks much better now. It was bothering me that Swarf was appearing before the parting tool was getting where it should be. And uh, I had to make some adjustments. Now, Hex and three jaw chucks don't go well together you really have to wriggle it around and keep just closing the chuck a little bit with the chuck key until you feel that you've really got it in the right place um, I used to do a lot of this stuff that's why I got so much scrap um, and I spent quite a bit of money getting a 5c collet closer made to suit my lathes so that I could actually use hex collets because if you're doing production work by the time you've got to 400 parts it's very difficult for that whole um, run to actually concentrate and keep just feeling the part in the chuck properly with a um, collet it's just so much easier Here we're actually making parts and they were coming out at 3.5 diameter and 2 millimeters long. As I mentioned before, that's just an aluminium insert cutting the brass. 20 degrees of rake. Nothing like the zero rake we were told when I was younger to use on brass. But it cuts nicely, doesn't it? Due to operator error somewhere along the line, the parting tool is going beyond zero 
and underneath the nib or the nib rises up over the tool and I'm getting a parallel nib instead of the tapered nib so I then uh, in later ones I adjusted that back so it wasn't uh, doing that and leaving me with a tapered nib it's just some information about the camera I'm using these days to take these videos and there's the exposure data for this particular video managed to get those figures due to a LED light I bought off eBay which makes about four or five stops difference when I'm exposing a video these days that's the light compared with the ambient light there's about a four or five stop difference it's quite amazing I've now turned the rapids up to six six thousand millimeters per minute because I'm reasonably sure nothing's going to go bang at this stage well there's just a caption there with the comment about the nib rising up over the tool and just reiterating that the parts if they're dropped off are impossible to find I've got them all over the place um, they were just getting lost everywhere you drop them and you can't find them hopeless so I've got 50 of these parts to make so just another 45 to get on with Thank you for watching. At least we got something made this time.